So like I was talking about biotics, biotics can also use Mass Effect fields. Um, it, it requires an intensive training on the biotics uh, part, but um, or also cybernetic implants. That's why biotics, uh, th there's a lot of talk about biotics with implants. Um, the Asari, it's natural for them, but um, other people need implants as sometimes to control this uh, mass effect fields that they, that they create with their biotics. Now some biotics aren't strong enough to um, to use that, that mass effect field in any way offensively or defensively, but all biotics are sensitive to the presence of mass effect fields. And there's a part in Mass Effect 1 that I remember, uh, and that you guys might remember as well. If you guys remember the the monument, the mass relay monument on the Citadel, uh, the one that was actually a back door to the conduit, on Ilos that the Protheans had made. When Caden uh, talks about the monument in the Citadel, he says that he, he's always felt something coming from it. Now people always thought that that was just a monument, that it was just the Protheans being proud of their, uh, of their, uh, of them creating the mass relays. So they put a monument of it, but they didn't know that it was actually a tiny mass relay. Caden said, I, I feel something emitting from it. He says that he could feel it like a tingling in his teeth. And that's because he's a biotic. Because of that mass effect field that is being emitted from this little mass relay. And that's why uh, Caden could feel it. So I just thought that was kind of interesting that they put that in there. But um, the use of mass effect fields creates static electrical charge. Now think of when you rub your feet on the on the on the on the floor with socks, and you get a little charge, and you zap someone, and you're just like, oh, that was hilarious. That that's a static electrical charge, right? For a ship, it's a little different. It's a little bigger. Like it's a little more dangerous. Ships. Now, you know, to release it, you have to touch something, right? So ships, in order to release that static that static electrical charge that they get because of the mass effect field that's being generated when they're traveling in space, they have to either land on a planet or at least interact with a planet's geomagnetic field. So at least just the atmosphere of it so that it could let out that charge. Now, if a ship doesn't let out that static electrical charge, um, it can cause the electricity to discharge into the hull of the ship and cause a catastrophic damage like engine blowing up and all this you know bad stuff like explosives and stuff like that so it could get really bad um now in biotics it's not that bad it's not that big the, the electrical the static electrical charge isn't that big so the only thing that biotics can feel uh, or manifest is uh, an occasional static shock, like I was saying, like when you're rubbing your feet on the on the on the carpet. So now that I explained what a mass effect field is, let's talk about faster than light travel or FTL. So as the name suggests, it's being able to travel faster than the speed of light, allowing you to travel long distances without the use of a mass relay. When you do use a mass relay, ships also use FTL drives. It's not like they don't use FTL drives. They do use FTL drives to move around in the, in the, in the space that you are being shot because mass relays pretty much shoot you through a tunnel. Wherever the mass relay leads to, you're going through the tunnel. And FTL drives, you it's to maneuver in that tunnel according to your speed. And the way that FTL drive cores work is by exposing element zero to electrical currents, creating mass effect fields via dark energy. So they're all tied together. In the case of FTL drives, it the mass effect field in, in that case is uh, a, a negative charge so it reduces the mass of the object, in this case the starship. If this didn't happen, if the, the mass wasn't lowered in the object, faster than light speeds would not be capable. You wouldn't be able to be, you wouldn't be able to go faster than the speed of light if your mass wasn't lowered. So that's why they need this whole process going on, element zero, dark energy in the mass effect field. So now let's talk about mass relays. The, this is very interesting because it completely goes into the mindset of the Reapers 
and the intentions of the Reapers, the Mass Relays. Mass Relays are directly tied to the contact that the Reapers had with every civilization that they've harvested, but mostly with between the, the Reapers and the Protheans. The Mass Relays say so much about that. And I think the key to not only understanding the Reapers, but also understanding what the Protheans were trying to do is in the Mass Relays. So the Mass Relays are, as you know, mass transit devices scattered throughout the galaxy to make, um, to make travel throughout star systems easier and possible. So this was, like I said previously, this was hailed as one of the most uh, gr uh, one of the greatest achievements of the Protheans, creating the Mass Relays. Now there still are people that believe that the Protheans created the Mass Relays. The Hanar, are, since the Hanar worship the Protheans as, almost as divines, the enkindlers, they, this whole issue when um, Dr. Kenson said that the, the, the Mass Relays were actually created by the Reapers, um, the Hanar don't accept that. They don't like that idea because um, it's it's pretty much saying that there was a species before the Protheans. And, you know, if they, since the Hanar worship the Protheans as divines, it's kind of taking or demeaning the, the worth of the Protheans because it's like, oh, well, they were great, but, you know, there was someone else before them and they actually achieved a lot more than the Protheans. So it really... It goes against the beliefs of the Hanar, so the Hanar don't accept it, that, that whole idea of the, the Reapers creating the Mass Relays. It's kind of like blasphemy to them. And some people just don't know uh, about this recent discovery. So that whole issue is just kind of um, a controversial issue. But the reality is that the Reapers created the Mass Relays. The blue thing that glows in the middle of the Mass Relays that is an element zero core. So like I was telling you, it all goes down to element zero um, and dark energy. The relays are made of an unknown but incredibly resilient material. The same material that the Citadel is built from. That's another, that's another uh, clue that the Reapers created the mass relays. The Reapers created the Citadel as well. So this whole, this, this material that is mysterious came from the Reapers. One of the relays even survived a supernova without being damaged. So it's very hard to destroy a mass relay, um, but of course you did find a way to destroy the mass relay in Arrival because it was all, uh, the way that it was destroyed, it was all calculated. Exactly what, how much pressure, how much weight, how much speed would take down a mass relay, and that was with an asteroid. The mass relays are cold objects that don't emit heat or radiation, which is very, very rare since they do create uh, dark energy via the element zero. Now when you do have this, the whole element zero and dark energy and mass effect fields, you usually have radiation. So it's, it's very strange that the mass relays don't emit radiation. Some Mass relays are anchored to a planet. They call it gravitationally anchored to a planet. For example, the Charon relay was gravitationally anchored to, to Pluto. And others just appear to be just floating in space and are carefully tracked because they do move. So the mass relays function by creating a virtually mass-free corridor. A corridor that's pretty much created through space and time. In order for a vessel to cross through a mass relay, the pilot has to input the weight of the vessel in the mass relay. They have to send that information to the mass relay so the mass relay knows exactly how much repulsion force to apply on that vessel given its weight. Now the way that relays work, you can't just say, okay, I want to go from this relay to that one over there. All relays are connected. It's a network. This, let's say, this, this, this relay uh, right here is connected to another relay. And this is what brings me to primary and secondary relays, what I was talking about earlier. Primary relays can propel a ship thousands of light years, but only link to one other relay. So let's say you're, this is one primary relay, the Charon relay is one of them. 
um, it it links to one other relay, only one, thousands of light years away. So primary relays have what's called partner relays. They're only one partner. Uh, between the relays. So it's a different time and I'm wearing different stuff because it's actually the next day. Yesterday I was filming Mass Effect Talks and I was filming for so long that my camera got really hot and it stopped working. So here I am again and let's continue, shall we? Where was I? Okay, so secondary relays, we were talking about, we left off talking about primary relays. With secondary relays, now they all look pretty much the same, but secondary relays can, um, can connect to, to, sh to other, to any other relay in shorter, but only short distances. This, this whole idea of secondary and primary relays is why, um, after the Rachni Wars, the council made it illegal for any race to activate a primary relay. And the reason was because primary relays, its partner relay, are so far away, like light years away, um, that you don't know what is out there. So so it's so far, and that's what happened with the Rachni Wars, that's how they started. They were like, um, we can't do that again because we activated this relay and then uh, w the Rachni came through and this whole war started. So that's why the council was like, let's not do that ever again. No, Nobody can activate a primary relay without knowing where it leads to because it could lead to, to another uh, place where there's there's a dangerous species there or, and probably spark another war. And then the humans activated the Charon relay, which I said earlier was a primary relay. But they didn't know about this. this they were ignorant about the whole council thing. I mean, obviously they were they were they weren't even they, they didn't even know other races existed, other other species. Um so they were off on their own, so they had no idea what was going on over here. Uh, so they, they activated a bunch, not just the Charon Relay, they started activating a bunch of relays. And then the first contact war started. Right now there are many mass relays that are dormant for unknown reasons. They're not sure why they're, they're, un, they're not activated. But they can activate them easily. Uh, the Charon Relay was discovered by the humans um, in the Prothean ruins on Mars. Uh, the, some information that they were able to translate led them to to finding out about this this mass relay Charon that actually wasn't a moon um, but it was encased in ice and this this is something that that is kind of confusing to me where I'm like why was it encased in ice S some people believe that it was encased in ice just because it was dormant and it wasn't it was it, it had you know gone cold pretty much but i don't know about that it just kind of seems like there's something more to that relay uh and and i was thinking about this the other day i was like oh my god i think i came up with something that might just be what's going on but it doesn't really make sense when you put it into the timeline um i thought okay well the the mass relay the charon relay was in the research of the Protheans on Mars. And the Protheans uh, would study the humans closely for years. They, they were really interested in the humans. They would study them. They, even, they would even abduct them and put little chips in them so that they could, um, so that they could uh, you know, study them closer. In Mass Effect 1, there's a vision that you have and it says that you're a, you're a crow magnon like a caveman and that they he actually feels like there's some someone uh, talking to him or someone listening to his thoughts and those were the protheans but i was like why why were the protheans so interested in humans and why was the charon relay encased in ice so i thought what if the protheans were trying to keep the the humans away from the rest of the galaxy. I was like, what if the Protheans thought these guys are the next, uh, the the next harvesting race for the for the Reapers? Um, so I thought, what if they they tried as hard as they could to keep them there? And maybe the whole studying the humans, it was them trying to find out which race would be next, and because they did come in contact with other races as well. I mean, they gave. They gave the Hanar uh, speech 
uh, but the humans, may, it sounds, for some reason, it just feels like they tried to keep them in the Milky Way without being able to get out, like, for their own good. Like, kind of like, because, you know, the, the Reapers put the relays there so that species could evolve, could spread across the galaxy, evolve to their highest potential, um, so that when they are harvested, they're, they're, you know, they're stronger, they're, they're, there's more of them, they're, they're all over the place. But, I don't, I don't know, like, it, it was, and then, but then I was like, wait, the Protheans didn't know about the Reapers yet. You know, because they were the next race. It wasn't the humans, the humans were after. So, I was like, how would the Protheans, why would the Protheans even be thinking about the humans when they were the ones that were next? So, I don't know, but it just seems like, like, it's all done on purpose, like, because it's all found in the Prothean ruins, and I feel like you're going to be able to find something, because you do go on Mars to look at this stuff in Mass Effect 3, because it's, you're actually looking for something that might help you understand what's going on and how to destroy the Reapers. So you go to the Prothean ruins on Mars, so I just feel like something's going to be there, like, the Charon Relay is going, there's going to be a reason for it being encased in ice and maybe maybe the Protheans somehow knew or were expecting something to happen like the Protheans didn't create the relays so I'm sure that they questioned themselves what the hell made that like what what is that they should they, they probably studied it and they found out something I don't know it's it's just a theory that I was coming up but then it didn't really quite fit but I think it's still there's still something there that has to do along those lines I just find it really interesting the whole the whole relationship or the whole connection um, between the Protheans and the Reapers because the Protheans obviously learned a lot about the Reapers so, so much that I mean, they even they even learned how to create um like a small a scaled size mass relay. They they created the 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 relay monument in the citadel that connected to the the conduit on Ilos. Now these were small relays, but they recreated it. I mean, they recreated the relays that the Reapers had made. So they, how did they, how, I mean, I think the Prothean involvement in Mass Effect 3 is going to be very, very interesting. And we're going to find out a lot of things that we didn't know about the Protheans and, and about the Reapers. Now, whether they found out about the Reapers before the Reapers came or after the Reapers came, I think it's the latter. I think the, Re the Protheans found out about the Reapers after they came. I don't think they were aware of the threat of the Reapers before they actually arrived because they would have been more prepared. I mean, pretty much the Prothean race was pretty much obliterated. Uh, only a few were remained um, safe, which were the scientists that were on Ilos.